Let me ask you a quick question about downtown since you just mentioned that. I mean, the city has spent, I'm not even sure how much money in incentives and set up TIFs. I mean, there, there's been a lot of money and effort pumped into downtown. Yeah. What, what do you think of that effort so far in terms of the payback? Well, we haven't seen the payback yet. I'm, I'm optimistic that uh, I th downtown Dallas is, is far different today than it was six years ago when more businesses are spiffed up and you see more people walking their dogs. And But it, it still has an awfully long way to go. And, and when you're in a uh, I was in Washington and Boston and several other uh, cities, and you realize, you know, we're, as a livable downtown, you know, we're 100th or 1,000th where those cities are, and we still have an awful long way to go. I think we're going to get there, like, in, at least in your or my lifetime. Maybe Emily, <laughs> maybe, but... I, you know, I don't know. There's a... Uh, the downtown's difficult here because we... The, um, they're really great American cities typically have lots of universities in their downtown cores, so they have a fresh group of uh, students come in providing, you know, the, the energy and the uh, kind of spark to that. If you go to Washington or or Boston, the, the tunnels make it more difficult for us. The fact our uptown area has developed, I think it's pulled some of what may have been urban uh, living out of the core. Um, I mean, does the city need to keep spending more money on downtown, or should we just let it go now and see what happens? I, I Oak think, Cliff is kind of an example of yeah. the city's kind of n not done much there, and look what's happening. Yeah, in fact, I spoke at an Oak Cliff forum, and um, the question I ask uh, is what happened here because of the city or in spite of the city. And, and uh, the people in Oak Cliff have, have really been a little bit like insurgents. They, <laughs> well, I mean, they, no, they, they've said, we're... we're you know, we're going to uh, develop zoning plans uh, organically within our community and do things we believe work best for our neighborhoods, and they've done that and have, I think, been hugely successful. Uh, the city spent about $1.1 million in the Bishop Arts District to, you know, provide a, um, a beachhead for develop. I, you know, I, there was a development... Uh, uh, case recently where, where Dean Foods is opening a warehouse, and, and the Dean's Food people, I think, are great. But I was really struck, if I remember correctly, that the city is going to give them $2 million. Dean Foods says, you know, we're going to come here regardless. And I don't, and, 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 and I think it's talking about creating 400 jobs, but then I'm not sure if those jobs don't, if those people don't live in the city of Dallas and, and where this business is located, there's a good chance they won't because it's in a far southwest corner that they live in uh, Grand Prairie or Arlington or somewhere else, uh, then I'm not, I'm not sure that we're going to, it's going to take an awful long time to get that money repaid just on the property tax and, and what we lose through the property tax abatement. These are tough calls. I just, you know, my view is uh, in the last four years that the, the, the thoughtfulness behind these decisions has been lost and if somebody asked for a handout, they got it. And without looking at the broader um, objective, you know, this is going to benefit our economy and make our city a, a better place to live. Well, let's talk about some of the big ticket uh, projects that we have going on right now. And um, the Trinity Toll Road is kind of at a standstill right now uh, while, while it's still receiving uh, funding. Um, if elected, what would, you, what would you do with that? Would you get it going again, or is it too expensive to really tackle right now? Which, your approach on that? Uh, I don't. I don't think that there is funding from uh, the state Department of Transportation. I know that the uh, North Texas Toll Road Authority had had never really, at least in the recent years, had it very high on their priority list and believed that they could come anywhere close to helping to fund that road through through tolls. If that was part of it, it would be a small part of the overall funding. What concerns me about the toll road? Uh, is that it, it has detracted uh, from focusing as aggressively as we should on getting the levees up to standard. I, I don't have the answer to this, but, but just watching what's occurred, I, I'm concerned that the Corps of Engineers uh, is being driven uh, 
to make a professional decision, which is contrary in the in the safety of our city and, and the protection of, of the floodway. I I know that there's frustration that the city believed that they had done what they needed to do, and then all of a sudden the court comes in and says after Katrina, you know, we're looking at levees differently, and we've set a new standard. That's frustrating, but but if if what the court is doing is based on good science and good engineering, I really think that's where we need to be. I, th I think that we have to look at these levees um, based on the, the risk that we could suffer to lives and property. Mm -hmm. And if the toll road is, detracts from working through the levee issues, uh, then it just ought to be put way on the back burner, and I think that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. Um, and also there's the Convention Center Hotel, which, um, if elected, you'll have be running or taking that over. What's, uh, how would you manage the hotel? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, I was asked this on another radio program, and since it's built, it, it looks great. I've uh -huh. not been inside, but, um, you try to make it successful. If it's not mm -hmm. successful, um, based on pro formas for the hotels, then, then the taxpayers are going to have to pick up those revenue bonds at a certain point. I, I'm, I, this is from being in government, I, I don't think the government is ever good at entrepreneurial activities. It, it's stuff that have to be promoted, marketed, where people, uh, you have to generate revenues. If you, you can walk into a uh, city of Dallas facility or walk in some place like, say, Six Flags Over Texas, and they're, and they're just different. I mean, the, the, the kind of people who work there, the, the, the uh, efficiencies of getting people in the marketing. The city never does a good job, mm -hmm. and and I'm the, the hotel stuff bothered me on the front end for two reasons. One is I'm philosophically I'm troubled that the city uh, directly competes with other private businesses who don't have that uh, financial advantage. It also troubles me when the last 25 years at every uh, hotel company in the world has looked at that price, uh, that hotel, and said, based on uh, what we know, we can't operate that hotel and make money and we're not going to build it. That's the only way it got built is through government subsidies, so that, mm -hmm. that bothers me. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we asked that question to Councilman Natinsky, and his answer related to the, hey, it's been 25 years and nobody else would do it, why are we doing it? Right was basically, if the city doesn't do it, nobody's going to do it, and if we don't do it, conventions are going like that in Dallas. Well, they, they may go down like that <laughs> anyway. Uh, you know, the, the convention center is a problem for the city because of the amount of, of debt with the expansion and, and remodeling. So um, it may be, I mean, he, he may be right, and time will tell, but it could be that now we have two white elephants that are uh, we're paying property taxes to support because they can't pay for themselves. And, and and I understand that a lot of times you have to make pragmatic decisions. I, I just it would be I would it would been very hard for me to support the convention center hotel. Since it's built then everybody should work to try to make it as uh, successful as possible. And another question I asked him and I'm a Texas Rangers baseball fan is that the Rangers lease in Arlington is up in I think about eight years. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Because there is essentially a potentially an opportunity if the Rangers wanted to move to Dallas, and the sports owners typically want the city or somebody else to kick in money. Yeah, um, I, I was in Arlington uh, when the uh, 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 ballpark was built, and I was in Arlington when the Cowboys Stadium was voted on, and I lived in North Arlington, and I saw my quality of life deteriorate. Uh, after 1994, and I'm not really sure what happened, but even the chain restaurants we had up in that area, Macaroni Grill and others, shut down because they didn't generate enough business. And if you look at the ballpark in Texas Stadium, uh, the Cowboy Stadium, to me, they're, they're, the, the, the structure is magnificent, but the areas around it just depressing. And and uh, you know, I, I, I but I think it's different in Dallas. And here's my view with the, the stadium. Um, uh, if the ballpark had been in Dallas uh, and it could have been put with the farmer's market area or somewhere on the edge of town and with our uh, uh, transit system and, and the density we have, I, I think it could have been magical in our downtown area. Mm 